Okay, the first question about uh, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, about the ummah being split, and is it too late to rectify? The reality is, this is something, you have another hadith where the Prophet وسلم, mentioned that he requested from his Lord that his ummah would never be divided, and that Allah Azawajal did not grant that to the Prophet. So the ummah being divided, what is upon the believer, it's not upon the believer to rectify the ummah. What's upon the believer is to be with the be with those who the Prophet sallallahu informed that they are the saved sect, and they are the ones that are upon that which the Prophet sallallahu was upon and his companions. So look for the group which is pleasing to Allah. Look for the group that implements the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu starting from Tawheed, adherence to the Quran, adherence to the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu as it was understood by the great greatest of people and that is the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what should be the focal point of the muslim is to look for that group is to look for to diligently look for that group and to uh, be a part of that group be a part of that sect and the reality is uh, bringing rectification to the ummah is not something that is accomplishable because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that it would happen and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that allah azawajal did not grant his, uh, his ummah, the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unity. It was something that was not granted to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, that dua. So it's upon the believer to focus on that which he has the ability to, and that is to uh, be amongst the safe sect. We ask Allah azawajal to make us from amongst those. How can we encourage our friends and families to attend uh, weekly lessons? One of the things is by mentioning the great virtues of gathering for lessons. Gathering for lessons, and that is the, like the hadith of Abu Huraira that we mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, the hadith in Sahih Muslim. Uh, likewise is to mention um, the fact that the Prophet وسلم, informed about the fitna happening and the division, method and division of the ummah. And then the Prophet وسلم, mentioned that those who are upon that which I am upon and my companions. So who are what, what, where are the masajid that according to that are calling to Tawheed and Sunnah? Tawheed and Sunnah, Tawheed and Sunnah. Where are you finding this? You might have masajid that you're always hearing about politics and you're always hearing about things that are not beneficial. Things that are not beneficial or are less beneficial. Are less beneficial. But where are the masajid that according to calling to Tawheed and calling to Sunnah and teaching hadith and teaching manners? and teaching fiqh, you know, along with tawheed, where are these masajid? Do you find it in the Sufi masajid? Do you find it in the Diobandi masajid? No, you, don't, you only find it in the masjid, the masajid of the people of the Sunnah, the masajid of the people of Salafia. Likewise, another thing is the tranquility, the tranquility that befalls an individual. When an individual comes to the masjid of the people of the Sunnah, he feels, he leaves and he's learned something. He feels that he's le left and he's gained nearness to Allah Azawajal. He's learned about his Lord. He's learned about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is something that brings the heart tranquility, harmony. This is something that brings the heart tranquility and harmony and comfort. To be amongst the people that encourage you to gain nearness to Allah Azawajal. Encourage you to learn the book of Allah Azawajal. Encourage you to learn the Sunnah of the Prophet. Encourage you to learn the language of the Quran, the language of the Sunnah, yani Lugal Arabiya. So these are the type of masajid that you want to be in, and this is one of the ways to encourage your friends and your family members. And one of the ways to do it is that you try, yani one of the things that I would say that would be difficult is to invite a friend or family member if it's, they're not accustomed to long lectures. Maybe don't invite them to a long lecture. You know, a lecture that's an hour and a half, two hours, maybe it'll be difficult for them. But, Matharin, if your masjid after the prayer, you know, after Maghrib or something, they have a 15 minute talk, 20 minute talk, then this is the type of thing you start them off with. And it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, in the Book of Knowledge, كَانَ يَتَخَوَّلُنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِالْمَوْعِظَةِ That the Prophet ﷺ used to give us a lecture every once in a while. The Prophet وسلم, used to give them a lecture every once in a while, you know, so that they would not become bored. So if your family member or friend is not accustomed to long lectures, 
Don't invite them to a long lecture. It's possible that they won't return. But one of the things that the masajid should implement is the reminders after the prayer. 10 minute reminder, 15 minute reminder. And there's even some books on that. Mathan and reading from Riyadh al-Salihin. Reading one or two hadiths from Riyadh al-Salihin give a short explanation. Invite them to that. So say come to the prayer and there's a short lecture. Come to the prayer and there's a short lecture. There's a 10, 15 minute lecture we read from Riyadh al-Salihin. So you invite them to that. They leave. It was very short. They say, I like it. And they'll come again and they'll come again. And then they'll say, you know what? I, I, I think I want some more. And that's when you invite them to the the, 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 the weekend lecture that's longer so you have to teach the people at their level you have to invite the people uh, and present to them on their level you do not bring them to the masjid or, or, or a lecture and you know it's going to be hours this would be something to deter them from, from coming in the future and Allah knows best with regards to the coronavirus a lot of uh, you know protection from the coronavirus first and foremost I advise the people to put their trust in Allah as well Advise the people to turn to Allah, make dua to Allah to protect them. Likewise, advise the people to do that which is necessary in terms of their religion. Supplicating to Allah Azawajal to protect them. We have the supplications that the Prophet ﷺ has legislated the believer to say when he leaves the home to protect him from all types of harm and evil and from that is, is sicknesses. Likewise, you have the supplication that uh, Allah protect you from, from illnesses and viruses. There is a supplication for that. You can find it. Uh, probably possibly on the, the, the accounts of the brothers. Um, some of the advice was mentioned by Amjad uh, Rafiq Hafiz Allah Ta'ala on his, his social media Twitter accounts, some advice with regards to the spreading of the virus. And likewise, you want to take the, the practical uh, means of protecting yourself, whether that's the, the sanitizer, whether that's covering your face, um, not being in large groups, Maybe when you come to the masjid, you have your own carpet, your own mat, so that you pray on your own mat and not put your face on the surface that someone else has prayed on. Um, when you enter your house, you sanitize your hands. When you leave your house, you make the dua. Uh, if you go into uh, crowded places, you wear a face mask. These are several things that an individual can do to protect himself. And we ask Allah Azawajal to protect us all. How to seek knowledge with having a, a busy schedule? That's a long, a long answer. Um, but one of the things that an individual should do is prior, prioritize his, what he wants to learn. So an individual, he says, I want to learn Qawad al-Arba. And he starts from that which is small. I want to memorize Qawad al-Arba. I want to read the explanation. Or Usul al-Thalatha. Or 40 Hadiths of Imam al -Nawi. So you take something small. You start with something small. And you decide that, khalas, this is what I want to work on or memorization of, uh, you know, Surah Al-Baqarah or whatever. Then the individual finds out his, he looks for his time pockets, pockets of time that he has. And he, re and he writes his schedule. He writes it, he actually writes it out. And even the Kufar say this, but it was even before the Kufar, you had from amongst the Sadaf al-Sadaf, Ibn Jama'a al-Kanani, Tathkirat uh, al-Sama, one of the greatest, and he's a contemporary of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, one of the greatest books written on seeking knowledge. And I believe it's, uh, it's in the process or it's about to be translated. Uh, but Ibn Jama'a mentions about, you know, finding your, your, your pocket, time, time pockets. So you say, I wake up this time, what do I do? So you write your schedule for the full day and you're, 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 you're realistic in writing your schedule for the full day. So you write your schedule for the full day and then when you see where you have pockets of time. And then you apply what you want to learn in that time. You say, okay, I see that I have time here. I'm going to dedicate this time to learning. If I'm driving to work or if I'm on the metro, I'm going to listen to the lecture in this book or the explanation by, by a scholar or a student of knowledge for this book. Then when I come home, methodin, let's say you come home at 9 o'clock at night or you come home at 8.30 at night, but you don't go to sleep until 11. So what do you do in that time? You say, I spend time with my family and I eat dinner. Okay. So you say, okay, from 8.30 to 9.30, I'll eat dinner. From 9.30 to 10 o'clock, I'll spend time with my family. From 10 o'clock to 10.30, I'll go off to my library and I'll memorize this book or read this book or listen to a lecture on this book. So you block yourself off. You cannot sit there in the living room while your family's talking and everyone's talking and, and, and memorize or read. You can't do it. 
you have to block yourself off. You have to go into a, a like, sort of isolation. You go into a, your study, you go into your basement, you go into your attic, and you read that book. You memorize it. You write it out. Right? And then, okay, then you can go back to your family. But a half hour to 45 minutes, you spend with seeking knowledge. You spend seeking knowledge. You do that consistently, you will be able to seek knowledge. And then you will find that you have a desire and a thirst to take more time. So on the weekend, مثلا, Saturday mornings, instead of sleeping late, no, you get up. You pray Fajr, and then for an hour after Fajr, you sit. While the family sleeping, you sit and you memorize. You review. You read. You listen to a lecture. And you do the same thing on Sunday morning after Fajr. Or if you get up at Tahajr at night, so you get up at 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. in the morning. So usually you pray Tahajr from 4 to 4.30. So then you say, okay, I'll pray to Hajj from 4 to 4.30, and then from 4.30 to 4.45, I will study. The point is that you find your pocket, uh, uh, pocket times, and you begin to use uh, those times for, for seeking knowledge. And a lot can be said about that. You can find lectures, even maybe on YouTube. I've possibly done something, and others, others from amongst the scholars and the brothers, they've done stuff on uh, how to seek knowledge if an individual has... Uh, is, is very busy but the, the person has to be one thing which is important is consistency one thing which is important is consistency so what I mentioned about finding the pocket times is consistency and even if something happens uh, that goes against that but as soon as it's finished you go back to your, your schedule you go back to your schedule so you actually make a schedule for seeking knowledge this is that which we have to offer. Allah knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh. Anbiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Tasneem kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.